There's this editor that I was coaching. He was one of my first ever coaching clients and he booked a call with me in the hopes that I would teach him how to do smooth editing. So this is something that my Twitter brand was growing at the time because of. So I came up with this new style, the smooth editing style that you've probably seen me do already, right? He saw that I was doing this and he tried it and he just couldn't manage to get it down. So he booked a call with me and we're in a call and I told him to share your screen and show me what you've tried in the past because of course I could teach him exactly what to do but I think it would help him more for me to actually understand his situation better and see how he did it first and literally as soon as he started editing as soon as he shared his screen and he started working I knew exactly the problem I knew exactly why he wasn't able to create these complex smooth effects like he saw everyone else do it wasn't that he didn't understand the edit like he knew what to do it wasn't that he didn't know what effects to use it wasn't even like his ability within Premiere he knew what to do the reason he wasn't able to recreate these complex edits that he sees it was because he was trying to do it all at once he went in with the mindset that I'm starting in edit and it's going to be a complex edit so he was working like second by second frame by frame knowing that this is going to be like a complex scene a complex edit like loads of stuff moving he was trying to do all of it at once but what you'll find is these big editors the ones that you see on twitter and have this like smooth editing style that you can't really imagine replicating they don't start with these crazy effects they don't go in with it with the intention knowing that this is going to be some crazy complex edit no what they do is they start with a base and then they build on that because right now you already know how to do like get an edit from like zero so like no no project to stage one like you know how to edit like i'm not going to teach you exactly here's how you import footage like i'm not this isn't going to be some shitty like skillshare course about how to actually edit that's not what i'm teaching you i'm going to teach you the actual framework to create smooth edits so you already know how to go from stage zero to stage one you know how to basically edit what separates an average editor from a great editor is they're not only able to go from stage zero to one like you are but they can take that stage one edit and then they can take it to stage two and then they can take that stage two edit and they can take it to stage three so they're able to go through all of these steps but what you've been trying to do what this other editor that was going through my coaching was doing he was trying to go from zero to stage three in just one jump he was trying to create this crazy complex edit and in the process what did he do he missed out the key stages of like one and two when you see all these crazy edits on twitter the reason they're so good isn't because they simply tried to create a crazy edit they're good editors why because they have the ability to go through each stage one by one without missing anything else and in this video i'm going to teach you exactly how to go through each step i'm going to solidify your foundation so that's ultimately what everyone is missing out on you don't have the fundamentals of smooth editing which is why you aren't able to create complex smooth edits like you have to get stage one and two done right before you can move on to three like after hearing that you're gonna think that oh i know what to do now i can go stop watching this video but i promise you if you stick with this just give me like 10 15 minutes however long this video you can check it now it will be probably the best like 10 15 minutes that you can spend like i'm gonna give you the framework for smooth editing this is the same process my thought pattern that goes into my head when i'm creating these complex edits and you're going to be able to do the exact same thing so you've got three components of smooth editing you've got context you've got curves and then you've got stacking so the first stage of smooth editing is figuring out the context of our movement so when you break it down a smooth edit you can pretty much break it down to separate movements like generally something will come onto the screen do some sort of movement and then come off the screen and you can break that up into three categories of movement so any sort of animation like any movement can fit into one of these three categories so you have entry exit and then intermediate the first two are kind of like self-explanatory so it's like entry is when something enters the screen so like so it's like let's say my hands are png it's like it starts from here and then by the end of the animation it's here so that's an entry animation it's something entering the screen then the exit is just something starts on the screen and then it leaves the screen and the last one was intermediate so intermediate is something i don't really hear that many people talk about but it's when something starts on the screen in one position and then it ends in another so it's like something moving from here to here so there's a different curve for that as well and what you'll realize is if you go watch an edit right now any edit like it doesn't even have to be mine you can use mine as a reference if you want but you can go watch any smooth edit that you like you realize that every single movement that they make anything that moves it'll fall into one of these three categories it'll either be entering the screen or it'll be leaving the screen or it'll be staying on the screen but moving to a new position and once you've done that knowing what curves and what velocity and all the effects to use on that clip it becomes so obvious because it's like it falls into one of these three categories you know exactly what to do and i'm going to show you exactly which curves and which animation you need to do for each one now all right so now you know what context is so you understand that each movement in Premiere can be broken down into like its very basic movement so let's say something comes onto the screen then moves around a bit and then comes off the screen we can break that down into coming on moving around 
then going off. And we're going to be doing that using the transform effect. So the transform effect, we use it over motion just because we can crank up like the motion blur, the shutter angle. So that's why I like to use transform. So first, what I want you to do is get like a PNG in your Premiere. Go do this now if you can. But if not, like I'd recommend writing notes or something on it. But it would really benefit you to have Premiere open right now as you're doing this. So put a PNG on your screen and add a transform effect onto it. And just do like a dead basic keyframes of like starting off the screen and then it comes onto the screen. And then also move your motion blur all the way to like 360 because that's just what I use. There's, it's very rare that I use like 180 degrees or 100 degrees, but I found that 360 looks good in almost any movement. And it should be like a little arrow next to your position keyframe. So where the little stopwatch is. So where the little like stopwatch is, you'll be able to click that and you'll realize that there's a line. And if you click on the keyframes, there's like these blue handles that you can move. These are literally what make up smooth editing. I just call them blue handles, but if you move these, it will change the velocity or something. So everyone talks about velocity. Velocity is just how fast something is at a certain time. So like, there's literally like physics that could go into this, but I'm just going to dumb it down because we don't need to know the physics behind fucking velocity versus position keyframes and differentiation and stuff. It's like, put simply, if the line is high, then it's moving fast. If the line is low, it's moving slow. And the three types of curves that we're using for each one, it's there's going to be a curve that looks like this. There's going to be a curve that looks like this. I mean, there's gonna be a curve that looks like this. And I look really goofy right now doing that, but I promise it will make sense and it will make your editing look good. So just stick with me for a bit. So we'll start with the entry animation. So when it, something starts from off the screen and comes onto the screen, just like you have now. Once you've got like the basic keyframes done, what we're gonna do is actually right click it. And I think it's called ease in and ease out. So that kind of just gives us a decent base to start off with. So entry curves, when something comes in, what we want to happen is it's really fast when it's coming in, but it slows down to a stop when it's onto the screen, right? So we're gonna use that in our curve. It's like, you're going to move the blue handle just like I am now. We're going to move the left handle to the left and then up, like really high up. And the right handle, we're gonna move to the line, like the zero line, and then move it to the left. You might have to mess about with it a bit or like move your left one higher, but what you'll find is that's how you do smooth motion for something coming into the screen. So what started off as like this linear, just like it comes into the screen and it hard stops. It suddenly become like, it comes in fast and then it slows down to a smooth stop. So it takes a bit of practice, but now you know exactly how to do an entry curve. So we're gonna move on to exit curves next. So that's when something starts on the screen and then leaves. What we're gonna do for this is literally the exact opposite of our one so add like a new transform effect clearly old ones and stuff and what's going to happen is we're going to keyframe it from this position to off our screen and the same thing applies with the curves that we use but this time we're just going to do the opposite thing so the right keyframe is going to be super high like we're going to stretch that really high and our left keyframe is going to be the one that we keep flat and level. So now you know how to do the exit animation. What's next? The intermediate one. So the intermediate one just means when something stays on screen and the curves that we're going to use is like this. So pick a position that your PNG or element is going to start from. Pick another one that's still on the screen as well. And then ease them in and out. So that's just going to be a nice base. And what we're going to do is pull each of the blue handles toward the middle and then down. So it's on the zero line, so it's not jaggedy. And what you'll find is you can change like how close they are to each other and it'll change how sharp it is. But what you'll find is it starts off slow. It's really fast for the middle bit and then it's slow at the end. So it's this move motion that just looks good in edits. So now you know exactly what to do for the entry curve, the exit curve, and you know what to do to move it from one place on the screen to another so intermediate curves as well and the thing is you're probably thinking like okay so you've taught me like the dead basics but that's what smooth editing is built on remember what i said being a good editor it's not about being able to go from zero to stage three it's about going from zero to one and then adding a little bit more to one to get to stage two then to stage three and it's like and all you have to do is just keep reapplying these basics on another layer and then adding a new png and doing it to another layer and then oh the text does this as well and what you'll find is these curves okay it applies to a png but it applies to every animation bro like, like let's say you want a subtitle to come onto the screen like you want it to slide up you're using the exact same curve okay it's coming onto the screen right so it slides onto the screen and even for things like scale and rotate so we've talked about it in the context of like position right so like sliding in and out but let's say zooming in like when you scale from zero to 100 that's coming on and off the screen as well so it's like when something starts from zero and goes to 100 what's that doing it's entering our screen right it's entering the scene so in the same way we use an entry curve that looks like this we're going to do that with our scale as well and the same thing applies with rotate and all of that it's like you just want to find out the context and then apply the right curve and this works in every scenario you realize that every smooth edit that you see on twitter and youtube it's like they all follow this rule whether they know it or not but I mean, I'm, I'm a weirdo, so I have to like consciously know that I'm following this rule. And then I found that it helps me and it'll probably help you as well. If you haven't been able to create smooth edits in the past, this framework will actually help you. And also, if you want to have like the exact presets that I use for like smooth editing, then I have 10 of them down below. They're free. You can just see how I did the curves and stuff. And I think it would really help you just understand smooth editing a lot better. Okay, so now you understand when to use a certain curve. So you, you know exactly what to do, right? But I know you're going to run into this problem where keyframes kind of get in each other's way. It's like you want something to enter and then exit the screen 
green but then you can't really do that on the same transform effect and honestly i'm not gonna waste your time the quick fix for that you just drag in a new transform layer every single time you want to do a new like movement so remember we said you can break down a movement into like its key components so if something comes onto the screen then leaves we can break that up we can break it down into coming onto the screen then leaving the screen and so each of those movements we're going to add a new transform layer to so by this point you already try to do an entry curve like you know how to do that and by the way if you are struggling with that then a few tips you need to remember that the blue handles they can go a lot higher than you think like you can literally like drag it above the the gray line and it will still work and also you want to have like the keyframes decently far apart which i found really helps with smooth editing but then the problem with having them so far apart is how do you fit in the other keyframes on this animation so once you've done your entry movement just add a new transform layer put that to 360 again as per usual and then use that new transform effect just for the exit animation so you've got one for entry one for exit my rule of thumb that i like to follow pretty much in every single edit every single transform effect is each transform effect maximum two keyframes because honestly it looks really good when you have like keyframes that are far apart like i said before and you have it really sharp as well so you've got sharp and long so it's like something's coming onto the screen but then the keyframes to take it off the screen have kind of already started like very slowly but it's already started to move off the screen and it's like you get this smooth motion where it never stops moving and like it just looks really good for smooth edits and the same thing goes with those intermediate movements so let's say something comes onto the screen then you want to move it to the top and then exit you just break that down into three component movements right you get one transform effect to bring it onto the screen you bring another transform effect to bring it to the top of the screen then you get another transform effect to take it off the screen and you'll know which curve to use in which scenario using that last section about curves and that's literally all you need for smooth editing there's that three-step framework of figuring out the context applying the right curve and then just stacking it each time you need to put a new effect on and you're going to have this limiting belief where it's like oh but this is too simple to work like surely it isn't just like just transform that makes an editor good and of course it's not it's like you're going to be using glows and like working different effects to make it look snazzy but to bring you from like stage one which you can get to now to stage two and then ultimately to stage three you need to know how to do this and keep replicating that like i'm expecting you to go off and practice this to the point where it becomes second nature like you can do it without even looking that's the point that i want you to get with these curves and once you're able to do that i promise you you're never going to see editing the same way like your edits are going to be so much better than everyone else's like i pretty much showed you how to do it with one png right like one png comes on then it moves up and moves to the side but imagine you did that with every single movement in your edit like go look at the edits that i post on twitter right go look at anyone's it doesn't even have to be mine actually when you break it down it's just one element is moving really smoothly and then he's done it for 50 different elements like and now it looks like crazy but ultimately he just went through each stage one at a time remember the best edits that you see they weren't made in one go they were made in stages and when you have this framework which you now have you'll be able to do the exact same and i'm teaching this because honestly there's nobody on youtube that teaches this people will teach like these random movie effects and like how to do this crazy glow thing where it's like someone comes out of a mirror but honestly with editing with youtube editing i'm not going to be using that and i wish i had a tutorial like this which taught me smooth editing which taught me actually how to make my editing just look better not how can i make a guy walk out of a mirror in like some crazy vfx animation like that's not what i'm looking for and i really wish i had something like this so that's exactly what this is because smooth editing and learning this style was genuinely one of the best time investments that i've ever made a huge reason why i'm working with the people i am now a reason that i'm working with these creators with 10 20 30 40 50 million subscribers it's not even because i'm like the number one editor in the entire world it's not that i'm just able to consistently create a style a smooth editing style that performs well and creators love it took me three years to learn this style and master it and figure out what works and what doesn't and now you have all of that for free here just to learn from and i really hope you take this to heart knowing that being able to have a style like this it's something most people aren't going to be able to do and it'll be something that differentiates you from every other editor out there when you are applying to these jobs and looking for these clients so i really hope you found like a stupid amount of value from this tutorial i'm looking forward to seeing what you make out of this and i think it'd be really valuable for you to put this into action as soon as you can because let's be honest most people don't actually go ahead and follow these videos they just go ahead and watch the next one and for the sake of your career something that you have a lot of potential in i think you'd really value from that so take care man